Rachel Chisley, Lady Grange, was born in 1679 and died in 1745. She came from a tragic Scottish family. Her father had shot dead the Lord President of the Court of Session, for which he had been tortured and executed when Rachel was just ten. His right hand was cut off before he was hanged, and the pistol he had used for the murder was placed round his neck. Her own tragedy began in 1707, when this renowned beauty married James Erskine, ironically a Lord of Session. It was the year of the union of the Scottish and English parliaments. The story takes place in troubled times. The Jacobites were those who believed that the old pretender, son of James the Seventh, was the true heir to the throne and should rule in place of the Hanoverians. They were in direct opposition to the ruling party. Their plans to restore James were considered to be treason and could be paid for in blood. Although Lord Grange himself was never directly accused of being a Jacobite, he certainly had Jacobite connections. His brother was exiled after the 1715 rebellion when he raised the standard for the old pretender, and the family estates were confiscated, so the whiff of treason made Grange's existence precarious at the least. The couple, who lived in Edinburgh, had eight children, but the marriage was not a happy one. Lord Grange had the money and the power. He controlled the relationship. From the start of their marriage, it was clear Lady Grange liked to be in charge. She was an attractive woman with a forceful personality, a fiery temper, and a love of command which she put to good use when he left her in favor of his long-term mistress. After the couple separated in 1730, Lady Grange was left with one weapon. If she were to reveal the existence of secret meetings with Jacobites thought to have been held by her husband, she would effectively accuse him of treason and he would be, at best, financially and socially ruined. In his own defense, or possibly purely to get rid of his detested wife, Lord Grange took desperate action. He turned to the old family method for dealing with difficult wives. Kidnap. James had previously been involved in the abduction of his brother's wife, who was mentally ill, and was already a dab hand at these matters. With the help of the Jacobites, on the night of the 22nd of January, 1732, Rachel disappeared from her Edinburgh lodgings. She was gagged and beaten, her hair was ripped from her head, her skin scraped from her face, her teeth were punched out, and she was dragged from her home to a place near Falkirk, 27 miles away from Edinburgh, where she was held for seven months on the ground floor of an inhabited tower. She was, by then, over 50 years old. She was then taken to various remote locations on the western seaboard of Scotland, including the Monarch Isles, Skye, and the distant islands of St Kilda. After 13 years of captivity, she finally died in 1745. The story of Lady Grange is a tale of such scandal and drama that it reads almost like a work of fiction, but it is the true story of the demise of a woman at the hands of her husband, thought too unruly, opinionated and shameful to live with dignity as the wife of an Edinburgh MP and law lord. She was an outspoken woman, prepared to fight for her principles, angry at her husband's infidelity and at her lack of power in her own household. But in the 1700s, her willingness to speak out, her partying, gossiping and outbursts cost her freedom. She has been described as a victim of the barbarous times in which she lived. Colin Demey wrote a series of poems on her memory. This is the first of two episodes on Lady Granger's life. Lady Grange From the first time we kissed we began to separate estranged 
conceived Sitsun, busted marriage. I count the chains around my neck, you bind my hands to keep them safe. Be a butterfly knows how to die, pin cushioned in death's wake. Edinburgh, smoke's legions twist around tall castle spires, from all towns smoke and lullabies. A baby's teardrops, sob, sad, joyful cries, soiree, sorry, happy, south for the fall, the Athens of the north. Ten years of age when my father died, hung at the tall booth, Mercat Cross, his pistol tied around his neck, his hand at the wrist, cut off. plucked once will always die tempestuous tempo tempo speak your mind loud angry words politics the two edged swords will sway two faced grimace to bury within denial the gift of the golden smile a smile to greet a smile the arms to hug, love holds so tight. Tis true friendship. Be in your bath the knife, the poison sweet red ruby wine kiss. Lord James shame for lady, no need to reminisce. Edinburgh, January the 27th, 1732. Too much to say. Jacobite, bite. She was seized in the dead of night, beaten, broken teeth, face, skinned. A wild cat fight, three men, one woman, a hood tied tight upon her head, be the curse of a spice last dread. Seven months locked in an empty tower. White ghost lady of the night, moon kissed its starlit hour, shadows in a window's pane, flitting faces passing by, the humming wind, a haunting sigh, sweet whispers, lullaby, 